Welcome everyone. I'm very uh, happy uh, and honored to be here uh, for this first cannabis startup meetup. Thank you so much for coming uh, for this event. I'm very impressed by the amount of people coming uh, tonight. And it's the first edition, but not the last, that's that for sure. My name is Antonin Cohen. I'm the founder of a company uh, called Harmony. Um, and we have been uh, supported by the the Family, which is a platform uh, for entrepreneurs, a platform for startup, um, and The Family is um, the people that host us today. So if you're an entrepreneur, uh, if you have a startup, if you want to create a startup, uh, I really highly recommend you uh, to check their website, thefamily.co, because they got uh, a very high level of uh, content, videos, articles uh, to help you uh, to get started uh, and develop your company. Uh, personally, I've been um, with the family for uh, three years now, and they've been uh, amazing um, to help me to expand my, my company. Uh, so thank you, the family, for hosting us uh, tonight. Uh, and check out their website, because it's full of really great content about uh, entrepreneurship. So why do we do uh, this event? Um, because we think uh, the, it's very important in the cannabis industry in Europe um, to approach it with uh, entrepreneurship mindset. Uh, we like to think that uh, uh, the industry is just beginning in Europe. There is still a lot of work to do and we make this event so people can um, meet like-minded uh, person, entrepreneurs, connect, collaborate and create so we can all together build a healthy and sustainable uh, cannabis industry uh, in Europe. It's just the beginning so this event is to educate um, and create connection. So my presentation is actually going to be a um, high-level uh, review of uh, what is cannabis and what is the cannabis uh, industry. Then I will let uh, two talented entrepreneurs uh, presenting their, their own startup. So let's uh, get back to the roots. Uh, cannabis is a plant containing more than 400 compounds. And actually, there is only one uh, that gets you high, is the THC. THC is a compound uh, from cannabis uh, that makes people high, that makes people uh, happy, or sometimes makes people a bit paranoid. It's a very powerful compound, and that's the only compound uh, which is illegal to use uh, still in, in France and in Europe. So we are not here really to talk about uh, THC, but more to talk about all the other compounds that we can find um, in, uh, in cannabis. Personally, I love THC, but uh, it's a very sensitive topic. Um, so we try to uh, stay away from the recreational usage uh, of cannabis because we think cannabis is a very versatile plant. You have so many different usage, um, and particularly in uh, the usage of well-being um, and medical usage. And it's been a bit forgotten because of the recreational usage of, of cannabis. So our goal is to talk more about the other usage uh, of cannabis than just uh, smoking and get high. I don't have anything against uh, that, um, but today we are not about to talk about this. So in cannabis, you have more than uh, 400 compounds, um, and there is two classes of compounds very important. Uh, the first one is the cannabinoids. You have more than 140 cannabinoids in the cannabis plant. Um, the most famous is THC. Uh, you have also CBD, uh, CBN, CBG, in total 140 cannabinoids. Then you have another class of compound, which is called uh, the terpene and the flavonoids, and that's what gives the smell and, and the taste. So with all these compounds, there are really very interesting things to do, um, and that's what uh, I'm going to, to talk about today. Um, and in the champagne you have over there, it's a cannabis champagne, but there is no cannabinoid, so you don't have any effect from it. You just have the terpene, uh, which will give a very uh, pleasant taste. So cannabis is one plant, but actually many, many strains. You have thousands of strains of cannabis. And just to simplify, um, I define two main family of cannabis. On one side, you have the marijuana, uh, which is usually a uh, high content of THC. So that's the type of strains that have been used for recreational usage or medical usage as well. And on the other side, you have another family called hemp, uh, which is defined by the fact that there is less than 0.2% of THC in hemp. So you don't get high from hemp, 
And actually, France is the biggest producer of hemp in Europe. Half of the production of hemp in Europe is coming from France. So France has a real competitive advantage uh, regarding cannabis. Not many people know it, uh, but we are a very big producer of hemp, and hemp is chanvre um, in, uh, in French. So THC is a compound um, that everyone knows, uh, or everyone knows cannabis because of THC. Um, that's a compound which uh, makes you high and uh, sometimes a bit paranoid because it's very powerful, it's a psychotype uh, compound. And then you have CBD. Um, CBD has actually the inverse effect. Uh, it makes people uh, feel a bit more relaxed. And then you have the terpene, which gives the flavor and the taste. What's interesting in terpene is that you find terpene in the cannabis plants, but you find also terpene in other plants, uh, fruits, like for example in lemon, you have the limonel, which is a terpene, that you can find the same terpene in cannabis, for example in the strain Super Limonase. What is the legal cannabis business industry today? So if you want to make a legal cannabis business, you have actually uh, three different types of business that you can do. The first one is a business that touch the plant, touch the plant containing THC. And this type of business has been booming in countries where cannabis is regulated, where you can get a license to grow medical cannabis. And it's happening right now in Europe. It's not happening in France yet, but in Germany, for example, they have a new law where they give license to industrials uh, to grow medical cannabis and to extract it. So that's a business which touches the plants. You need to get a license from the government to grow it legally. In Europe, you have Germany, but you also have Portugal, Czech Republic, um, Poland, and it's really opening right now. A lot of governments all over Europe are looking for industrials uh, to give license uh, and produce medical cannabis, which will be sold later on in a very regulated market, for example, in pharmacies. Then you have a second type of business, uh, which use cannabis, which is products made from hemp. So hemp, as I say, doesn't contain THC, so there is absolutely no recreational usage from hemp, you don't get high from hemp, and you can do many, many things with hemp. Um, the classic usage of hemp in France is for the fiber, because with the fiber of hemp, you can make some clothing, you can make some insulation, um, some building materials. You have also in hemp the seeds, and with the seeds of hemp, uh, we do um, hemp seeds oil. And you can actually buy some hemp seed oil uh, in supermarket like Leclerc or Carrefour. It's an oil which is used for cooking, like you have the olive oil, you have the hemp seed oil. And this oil is also used in products, for example, cosmetic. And you have also uh, extraction of hemp to get all the cannabinoids and all the terpene. And then this type of compound coming from hemp are legal because they are coming from hemp, a legal strain of cannabis. And then you can create many products uh, from that. You can create cosmetic again, as well as uh, food supplements, um, e-liquids. Uh, so you have many, many usage with hemp. And actually, uh, France have very, very big competitive advantage. Um, still, some regulations are limiting a bit the usage of hemp. For example, you cannot uh, use the flower of hemp. Um, and that's something, um, as an industry, uh, we are working on. Uh, we are in touch with authorities to explain them the economic potential of hemp. And then you have all the type of business that we call the ancillary business. So the ancillary business is everything which doesn't touch the plant, but it's related to cannabis. And this is also booming because, first of all, it's way easier to build a company on the ancillary business because you don't have regulations about cannabis. What is an ancillary business with cannabis? It's, for example, a software, a software dedicated to um, cannabis dispensaries, which are going to sell cannabis uh, in pharmacies. You need a software for that. Uh, if you're a product maker, if you're a tech guy, um, maybe building a software for the cannabis industry may be uh, a very um, interesting uh, opportunity for you. Uh, you have also the, the, um, all the products that are related to cannabis without touching the plant is an ancillary uh, business. For example, you have as well um, some um, 
home box that you can use. So they don't sell you the plant, they sell you the materials to grow the plant. Um, you have also a lot of uh, new projects popping up, like uh, media agency uh, dedicated to cannabis, uh, marketing agency, um, events. So all of that is ancillary business. Um, and it's way easier because obviously you don't touch the plant, so there is no regulation. Still, it's a very booming market. And this is the numbers of the legal cannabis market only. Um, in 2017, uh, seven billion dollar market. Uh, and this market is mixed between legal cannabis, uh, for example, in the US or in uh, Germany, as well as hemp uh, businesses and ancillary business. So seven billion is still a pretty interesting market size. But when you look at the growth, it's actually insane because it's going to grow uh, to 31 billion in 2021, and this type of numbers are quite unique. Today, if you look at industries, um, cannabis is the fastest growing industry in the world. It's growing way faster than any other industry. It's growing way faster than the tech industry, for example. So it's a massive opportunity for entrepreneurs to join the industry now. It's already big, already uh, money to make, but it's growing so fast that we know for sure a lot of companies are going to come into this market and become world leader. Like you have, for example, in the internet, some leaders like Google, Facebook, Apple, uh, Amazon. Uh, you're going to have this type of company in the cannabis industry. That's what we call the unicorn or the billion dollar. Um, and you're going to have a few coming up from the cannabis industry. So as an entrepreneur, it's a really interesting opportunity to catch up. Uh, today is still early. Everything has to be built. So that's where uh, there is a less competition as well. And as startup is it's really great because you can bring your expertise in startup to the cannabis industry, which are missing a lot of experience because it's so new, so nobody is expert yet. And talking about the growth of the hemp-based product sales, just to show you that uh, it's going very fast um, in all type of business related to cannabis. So this is only the hemp-based product, like cosmetic um, or building materials, and it's growing like crazy too. So it's not just about touching the plant and, and the flower uh, with THC, it's really uh, all the aspect of the cannabis industry that is bringing this really, really huge growth. Um, and this is stopping in 2020, but obviously, it's not gonna stop uh, because um, it's just starting and, and we can be sure that the growth for the next 15, 20, 30 years is going to be massive. So now uh, a good question um, to ask, why hemp and cannabis is not more used? Um, and that's a very good question because when you look at the growth, you look at the potential of the products you can create, you can think like why nobody is doing it, you know, why big companies uh, are not investing it and why there is no more products, why it's going so slow. And the main reason, is the prohibition and jabalization of cannabis for the past 50 years. Um, everyone was saying cannabis is bad. Everyone has been focusing on the recreational uh, usage of cannabis. Um, it's been prohibited, it's been jabalized um, for the wrong reason, actually, because you cannot die from cannabis. There is no overdose uh, from cannabis. So it's a very safe plant to use. Um, but still, you know, it makes people happier. It makes people a bit paranoid as well. So it's important to use it in, in, in the best possible way. But the problem of this prohibition of the recreational usage is that we totally forgot the other usage of cannabis. It's not just to have fun and, and, and smoke weed like you can uh, drink a good glass of wine. Um, I know a lot of people compare cannabis with alcohol because obviously alcohol is very toxic. You can die from alcohol very easily, but you cannot die from cannabis. So people are like, yeah, we should legalize because uh, alcohol is more dangerous. Like this is an interesting question, but for me, uh, what's the most interesting is to realize that actually um, the usage of cannabis is much, much more um, interesting in the well-being department and in the medical aspect than in the recreational aspect. Um, and unfortunately, because of of the prohibition of the recreational usage of cannabis, um, there is no usage allowed or developed in well-being and in medical. And that's also why big companies are not coming into this uh, industry yet, because they are just afraid, uh, regulations are very unclear, the image of cannabis is very bad, so if you're a big company and you launch cannabis product, a lot of your clients will not be happy by that. So that's our job also as an industry, uh, to educate people on all the usage, and that's also why we do uh, this type of event. 
And I would like to finish my introduction by um, talking uh, very quickly about my company, uh, Harmony. So as you can see with Harmony, uh, we try a bit to break the cliche of cannabis. Um, we try to have a positioning which will be uh, well-being um, and not recreational usage. So you don't have big cannabis leaf on uh, our packaging. Um, we try to have a biotech approach. Uh, and that's also the way you make people evaluate because what we want is to create cannabis products for the whole family. We want uh, your grandmother, your grandfather to use cannabis because it could be so useful for them. But just because of the bad image and uh, no accessibility, uh, people don't use this plant where it can be extremely useful for them. So that's our job as well to democratize uh, the usage of uh, cannabis beyond the recreational usage uh, and educate people about it. That's why um, at Harmony, we try to make products uh, which are not just targeting uh, the hardcore cannabis uh, fan, uh, but also the whole family. To finish my introduction, I just wanted to say that uh, we are hiring a lot uh, in my company. Um, we are 25 people now. We are based in Barcelona. Uh, this is the image of our daily lunch. So every day we have a lunch with uh, organic foods and, uh, and vegetables. Uh, some people are vegetarian, so there is no meat. Uh, you can see our cooker just uh, top, uh, top right. She's amazing. So we have a very, very uh, nice team in Barcelona. But the issue we have is actually hiring people because most of people, they don't believe yet in the cannabis industry. Uh, seems like 15 years ago with internet, people didn't see you know, the potential of it. Uh, and it's the same with cannabis. I have such a hard time to hire people. We need to hire three to five people by month just to keep up with our growth. Um, and I don't have really uh, great candidates or a lot of startup people uh, that are applying because they just don't see the opportunity yet. So today is your opportunity. And that's also uh, what I hope after this event is uh, to find some people that could join our team who are hiring in every department um, of the company. Um, here is the link to the jobs ads. So please, if you can uh, write the address, you know, um, and look at it tonight, and then you write me an email tonight as well. So I will let you see that very well, because that's very, very important for me. <laughs> um, we're hiring in every department possible. We're hiring in sales, in marketing, production, distribution, science. We already an amazing team of 25 people, but we need more people. The job is based in Barcelona, uh, so it's pretty cool, you know, but still people think it's gonna be chill. We're a cannabis startup in Barcelona. It's very fun, but we are, we are working like crazy because we are here to take over the world. Uh, we are very ambitious and we want people that know how to work very hard uh, and still feel passionate by the mission uh, we are on. So that's the end of my talk. Um, I will uh, now let two very talented entrepreneurs uh, present their startup. Um, the first one is Laure. She's doing a cosmetic brand with cannabis. And the second one is, is uh, Joe. Uh, he's coming uh, directly from Berlin for the meetup tonight to talk. There is also uh, John, which has been involved uh, in a medical cannabis program in Germany. So I'm very excited to have uh, so many great talents coming for our first event. Uh, uh, it's pretty amazing. Um, and now, if some of you guys have some questions um, for me right now, please tell me and I will, uh, I will reply. What part of the business is, is growing from uh, new products? So the black market becoming legal. Is it the black market becoming legal or is it new products? That's a very good question. Actually, in Europe, we are a bit lucky. Um, and uh, maybe uh, it's not a very good thing. But we're always a bit late in the game um, in comparison to the US. So by looking at the US market, you can see more or less what's going to be the European market in the, in the next 10 years. And if you look at the US market, at first, you do have a lot of people uh, that is going to uh, legal cannabis shop dispensaries. So just to let you know, in the US, you have now 80% of the states which have a medical cannabis program. Even you have a few states which have a recreational program. So it means you can go in a shop and buy legally cannabis. Um, and they say maybe on the whole country it's going to be legal soon. So at first, you have um, people uh, and companies growing cannabis and selling the flower, um, like um, 
dealer will sell the flower to their customers. So you do have this black market becoming legal. However, that's really the first step. Uh, right now in the US, when you look at how many, uh, what type of products are sold in dispensaries, actually the flower itself um, is becoming a minority in terms of the revenue. Most of the products sold in dispensaries, in cannabis dispensaries in the US, uh, are actually products made from cannabis, but that it's not the flower, it's the extract, for example. So you're going to extract the compound from the flower. Uh, to transform it uh, into a vaporizer, into an oil, uh, into um, um, a capsules, um, into cosmetics as well. At first, the clients are just going after the flower, you know, because that's what they are used to. But actually, smoking the flower is not good, you know, because uh, there is combustion. So you are going to inhale um, some of, uh, like, you're going to burn actually the, 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 the flower. And in the flower, you have. Um, some residue like uh, fatty acid, wax, chlorophyll, and when you burn that, it's not very good for the health. Um, and that's why in the US, they're much more educated now, um, and most of people are actually buying uh, vaporizer, oil. So that's most of the market today. Um, so it's a big opportunity for product makers to understand what the market needs, um, take the cannabis, extract it, and create the products that, that people are looking for. You uh, I see more details about my company, Harmony, and where we are based in, uh, in Barcelona and our competitive advantage. Um, Harmony is a company specializing on um, the usage of uh, CBD and terpene. So CBD is a compound from cannabis, I explain you. Uh, it doesn't get you high. Um, so it's a very safe compound to use. Uh, there is no secondary effect. Actually, two days ago, it's a very big win for us. The World Health Organization said that CBD is safe to use. We knew that, of course, because we did the studies, you know. But it's nice uh, to uh, show that uh, even uh, the highest level of uh, uh, organization over the world is studying it and saying and confirming that it's totally safe to be used. And um, we started to focus on the usage of CBD and terpene in e-liquid for electronic cigarettes. Because we think electronic cigarettes is a great tool for smokers. Uh, you all know why electronic cigarette is useful. Um, and we look at the market of electronic cigarettes and we realized that it was only for cigarette smokers. Um, and that's why we thought it would be interesting to create an e Liquid uh, with CBD, uh, with terpene to recreate the original aroma of some cannabis strains for the cannabis smokers. So that was our first uh, goal: is to help people to transition from uh, smoking uh, to vaporizing um, because it's way better. Um, and then um, we've been uh, actually launching the company in Prague uh, three years ago. Um, we were in Prague because that's the country where we uh, grow and extract uh, hemp. Um, and, uh, and then we moved to Barcelona because uh, it was very hard in Prague to hire talent. Uh, we need to grow the team, and obviously Prague is, 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 is a nice city, you know, but uh, uh, Barcelona is much more international. Um, we are hesitating between um, Barcelona, London, and Berlin, and we pick finally Barcelona because in terms of cost, it's uh, interesting in comparison to London, um, and in terms of Cannabis community is also a really great city. Uh, you have a, a great community of people uh, creating products with cannabis in, uh, in Barcelona. And today, our goal was to build a very international team as well. So that's why I didn't want to stay in France, even if I'm French. Um, but I thought if I stay in France, all my team will be French. And I wanted to really think European first uh, and expand my products in many different countries at the same time. So we build a very European team from Barcelona. Actually, we are 25 people and we have 12 different nationalities um, because it's very important to have native people uh, to explain the type of products we do. There is a lot of cliche around cannabis. So if you go to sell products um, in Germany, um, it's better to have a German guy and the same in Italy, in UK, in France. Um, so it's really a marathon um, with this company because obviously three years ago, um, like the image of cannabis was not the same as today. It's been evolving very, very, very quickly. Uh, but we still see we are really just at the beginning. Any other question for me now? You can always ask me later on. Um, if there is no question, I will let the mic uh, to uh, Laure for the next presentation. Thank you, everyone.
Thank you. So I will start straight away and not wait for the slides. My name is Laure Bougain. I'm the founder and CEO of Okahan. At Okahan, we do cannabis sativa care, so it's skin care product was made with cannabis sativa oil. We just received the oil production this morning, and it's on the table. I hurry up from Nantes, where the, where the team is based, to, um, to give them to you. So if you have some feedback, you want to give it a try and give me your opinion, I will be really glad to have it. The idea is not to advertise the company, the idea is to explain you what we do, how we started, so don't hesitate if you have just questions, and I tried to give some feedbacks about entrepreneurship since we are the family. So first, our vision. Our vision is that cannabis is one of the most wonderful plants on earth. I put one of the most and not the most because I'm trying to be agnostic, but actually I'm really convinced that is the most. It's a wonderful a food for, the, for your skin, of course, this is what we do, but also for your body, as Antoine explained, with the oil is amazing, and for your mind. And our mission at Okahan is to reveal the natural skin benefits of virtuous cannabis. We speak about virtuous cannabis because, as Antoine explained, we don't put THC, we're not using THC, and we want to explain to people that cannabis can be healthy, and this is one of the biggest challenges. Um, so I put this disclaimer because here in France people make jokes. But they don't make jokes because what you do is funny, they make jokes because they feel uncomfortable about your business because they don't know how to interact. So this is our role to explain, this is our role that, to explain that we are not stoners, that we are not junkies, and that actually cannabis can be healthy. This is a hemp field in Brittany, Bretagne. Uh, from the plant to the laboratory, everything is done in Bretagne at Ocahan. So this is one of the fields of our producer. It was in September be before the harvest. I will not spend too much time on that because Antonin already explained. So we are using cannabis sativa oil in the product. Cannabis sativa oil is an inky name. So when you have a skincare product and you return, you have this really ununderstandable list that you can read. It will be written cannabis sativa oil. This is actually hemp, chanvre in France, in French. So cannabis sativa is a botan botanical name, and then you have different kind of varieties uh, depending on the THC rate. So with hemp, you have seeds. We are making oil for the skincare products. Uh, for instance, my grandparents grew hemp for the stem, which fiber was transformed in paper. But we are really agreeing to use flour too. Flour would be amazing in skincare products because inside you have the CBD. Uh, CBD um, can have a price up to 30,000 euros per kilogram. To give you a comparison, gold is 22,000, so it's more expensive than gold, but it has really, really amazing effect on skin. Just to explain why we are using um, cannabis in cosmetics. First, currently all the products are made with oil. Oil are an amazing rate of omega-3 and uh, 6. 10 to 40 more times than avocado oil, argan oil, or coconut oil. And at the same time, it has the same lipid profile than the skin, so it doesn't cluster the pore, and it's really moisturizing. And then you have antioxidant properties, antiseboric properties, so you can trigger acne. Um, you have skin conditioning and skin protecting properties thanks to CBD. That's why we are preparing some serums for the next semester. So this is our goal, to be the first French brand of cannabis cosmetics. And all the products are for men and women, are natural between 96% and 100%, are vegan, are made in France, and of course they don't have THC. So maybe more interesting for you, few things that I learned trying to have a business in cannabis. You have censorship. We, we are making skincare products, so you can wonder how come we can have issue with that, but we do. So we don't have a Facebook uh, ads account anymore. It's been closed by Facebook. Of course, we don't have Instagram ads either because you are not allowed to promote drugs. Um, so if you put the, just the leaf of the hemp, hemp, no THC, it's drug. We made a Kickstarter campaign, but it was very difficult. At first, we tried on the Indiegogo. So Indiegogo refused directly. There, is, there was no way we could have a campaign. Then we put our campaign on Kickstarter, and our mission is we do cannabis sativa care, and they have this amazing algorithm that screen all the texts, and directly they refuse with a robot. So then we ask how come, we explain what we were doing because they say we are promoting drugs. 
So at the end, what we do is that all the occurrence of cannabis, we take them away, and instead we put hemp. So from, we do cannabis sativa care, it became we do hemp care, which is definitely less sexy. We have issue with payments. Uh, we wanted a Stripe account because we have, uh, on our website, we wanted to put refill program. Uh, we are not allowed to have a Stripe account. Uh, Stri we had an amazing answer from Stripe, actually. It was not a robot, it was a real person, uh, a wonderful woman saying that she loves hemp and this is a, a great plant. But investors at Stripe don't want to support hemp link um, businesses. So not cannabis, hemp link businesses. This is a real issue and at the same time, this is such a great opportunity for entrepreneurs because uh, just to let you know, 50% of the business made in US is made in cash with legal cannabis. Because even if your business is legal, you, you still have issues with payment. So all this cash has to be treated in a way and as an entrepreneur, maybe you will find a great solution to help all the new startup coming in cannabis. And me, I don't have issues with PayPal and MasterCard, but if you use a flower, which happened for some companies in Switzerland, for instance, you won't have PayPal or MasterCard. Maybe a little less interesting for you, but as an entrepreneur, what I learned from having a skincare uh, company with products, because having products is difficult. When you meet startups, they all want to be an intermediary between one value proposition to another and, and take just a little amount of that. No one wants to have logistics, to have products, to have R&D. It's, it's really difficult, actually. So just to let you know, we can have MVP in cosmetics, but it's more a market failure. It's because you try your product, you put it on the market, it didn't work, and then you say it was my MVP. But actually, it's not. So we launched the first version of Okahan in 2016. At, at first, Okahan was only for men. Because I didn't like the women market, and um, I wanted to do, make something else, something new and funnier. So I made the first version. It was so difficult in terms of distribution and communication because men, seriously, you should use more cosmetics. So what I did is that we decided to open the market and to transform. So we did all the R&D again, all the production again, and that's why we just received the products to launch a new version that is exactly the same, basically, in terms of composition, but that is for men and women. And also, it's really catch intensive because between the moment when I have the idea to launch a product and the moment when the product is on market, it happens at least a year. So during a year, you need to finance, 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 and just to let you know, people like Amazon, they pay you three months after they receive the product. So you have a real cash issue. Um, so it's not impossible. Um, I'm 26, I started Okahan, I was 23, I was a student, so I didn't have money, I didn't have love money, for instance, I didn't, uh, I didn't have any way. But I think that money shouldn't be an excuse not to make something, it's just a mean, it's not an end. So you can find solution. I should I put a picture of Charles Ponzi, I don't know if you know the Ponzi scheme, because I found a very, very uh, small but really dangerous issue is that I took loan to have loan and then I could finance the old project. So I won't tell you how many loans I have because the fingers of one hand are not enough. But it can lead to having product and at least when you have product then you can have investors because they want you to prove first. So it's possible, it just takes a little bit of strength. And then I wanted to let you with this sentence. If it was in English, I could translate it as the uh, same thing has different faces, whether how you look at it. This is a, a quote that we put in all the packaging. I really love it because it comes from Baltazar Graciani Morales, who is a, fr a Spanish priest who was a bit rebel. So I like it for that. And this is exactly what we think about cannabis. Cannabis is healthy. It just depends on how you use it. And it really helps people. So we need to fight for uses. And I just wanted to give a big thanks to Antona who organized with the family all this event because it's really difficult to be precursor in the field. Like when you're the first one, you have to face a lot of issues. You didn't say all the issues you had to face, but I know it was quite a lot of problems. So thank you for being so strong. And thank you for fighting for those who don't have the strengths. Do we have health allegation? It's forbidden in cosmetic to have health alle allegation. We have cosmetic allegation, but not health. So yeah, we have to be very careful on the words we use uh, to be sure that we don't have issues on that. So um, we, we're very careful. No, we don't have health allegation.
And now John. So, um, wow, this is a room full of entrepreneurs, I guess. That's awesome. Um, t two days ago, actually, Antonin sent me an email, invited me over to come here and present Seedon. And um, John and I, John, you, you're going to meet John in a, in a second, and I are also uh, organizing meetups in Berlin. And it's just inspiring to see that this is something happening all over the world, or, or in Europe especially now. And um, I just think it's awesome that this industry kind of like, you know, connects people. Cannabis connects people. And that's just something I want to state first, like, at the very beginning. It's, it's, it's really great to see you all here. Okay, um, so my name is Joe. Um, I'm the founder and CEO of Seedon. Seedon is a home grow furniture. And I will get to, get to that uh, now. So, you know, we, we've been growing plants for over thousands of years. You can actually argue and say it is part of what makes us human. But when cities were built, we got more industrialized, and then we put the process of growing into the hands of others. And by doing that, we've lost transparency over what we are consuming. And that's an issue because we are what we are consuming, right? Also, as a medical cannabis consumer, it always intrigued me to grow my own medical cannabis. Because that way, I could save tons of money, literally, like thousands of dollars a year. And what is even more, I would know what I'm consuming. We believe at Seedon that healthy produce is grown locally because then it does not have to be shipped all over the world. And healthy produce is pesticide free. And this is especially true for medical cannabis or cannabis in general. Because most of the cannabis that's been consumed is, is heated up. And if you heat up cannabis, there are studies that show that uh, if you heat up pe pesticide inf infused cannabis, there are studies that show that this can be lethal. So that's a big deal here, okay? Um, so when I started to look into growing my own cannabis in San Francisco two years ago, I was stunned by the amount of knowledge that is required in order to grow high quality cannabis. In fact, 70% of all first time growers, I've just mentioned the benefits of, of, of growing, right? And 70% of these first time growers fail to grow with traditional solutions. So if you go online and search for these informations, you, you get stunned by them. So first of all, you have to go through hours of forum posts. And then you have to ask yourself, like, what lighting should I get? Should I use modern LED technology or should I use high-pressure sodium lamps? There, there are thousands of different, different brands. And you can, you can continue. Like, what nutrients should I use? And what's, what's the ratio between, like, iron and, and you're nicking, right? You know the issue, yeah. <laughs> iron and phosphorus and all these different chemicals. And, and again, so many different, different brands. So it's really confusing. And then, what medium should I use? Is it aquaponic or bubbleponic or all these new terms? Or should I just use good old soil? Right? And on top of that, you have to choose whether you want to close down an entire room in your building and uh, your, your flat, who wants to do that, or get one of these big Right? So it's a pain, all this for just one plant. The barriers to entry home growing are just too high. And that's not a joke. Not too high. It's not that you're too high. They are too high, okay? And, and that's the whole thing. And that's why I've set out and, and I, I left San Francisco with that idea in mind. I left the destigmatized environment in San Francisco and came back to Europe to found that company, actually in, in Berlin. And we are building home grow devices. And Anton is gonna show you a video, which we've made to just visualize like how this product works. Hi, I'm Seedon. I grow your favorite plant right in the comfort of your home and get delivered with everything you need. 
even an air filter, to remove any odor that the plant might produce. Simply pick a seed, tell me about your choice, and watch it grow into a high-yielding plant. Welcome to the Growing Revolution, designed by a team of German engineers and scientists to enjoy healthy food and medical herbs, free from pesticides, stress, and worries. The modular system integrates perfectly into your home. To ensure best results, I even sent you a notification when it's time to water. Sit back and enjoy your harvest until the next plan is blooming. What are you waiting for? Play by your own rules and join the growing revolution. Limited availability. Pre-order today at seeden.io. Thanks. So, so what we're doing here is, is basically solving three problems, right? Does that work? Yeah. I know you can't. Okay. So the black market cannabis is impure and it's illegal to buy cannabis from the black market, right? So you can just create clean cannabis at home. Shops are unreliable. You have to stand in lines. But what is even more, it's super expensive. And studies show that 80% of the cannabis, at least in California, is infused with pesticides and pesticides are lethal. So you don't really know what you're consuming there. And then other systems are not smart and way less fun. They don't connect you with a community of people who are like-minded, who have experience with what they are doing, and with people who are willing to share their produce. Because people are willing to spend that much money in dispensaries because they get a whole variety of different strains, right? If you just grow one strain at home, that's good if you are a medical patient and if you know like, what particular strain helps you, with certain issues, but if you're a recreational user, you want variety. So what we do here is we, we connect these people and let them grow different strains and then kind of like build a digital dispensary. And that brings me to the, the vision of Seeden. We want to change produce, but in particular cannabis globally, okay? And, and how we're going to do that is by pushing a very affordable product into the market, the one that you've just seen, the price is probably going to be around, and this hopefully stays in that room, <laughs> uh, 59 bucks a month. So it's cheaper than your regular consumption. And you know what you're consuming. So just benefits, right? So we push that into the market. And people will build like loyalty to that product because it's beautiful. They put it in their living room, they check the plant every day, and they build loyalty. And I strongly believe that this is the best entry point to the whole cannabis industry. And, and just a quick survey, like who of you are looking for entrepreneurial activity? Oh, no, let me ask the question other way. So who of you is looking for in investing money in the industry? Are here any investors around? One, two, okay. So three, okay. And, and, and the rest of you is looking for getting involved just as an employee in a company, maybe at Harmony or at Seedon, or at your company. Who have you? You as well, okay. And the rest of you wants to found uh, their own companies? Who of you wants to found a company in the cannabis industry? So why is the rest of you here? So who, who of you wants to found a common company in the cannabis industry? You, who of you wants to make money in the cannabis industry? Okay. And I really believe what is important now at the beginning is the branding. And that's what we're going to focus on in 2018. We're actually working on... Um, so right now we've started out and uh, we've done the research development in Germany. Um, got the product ready. Now we're entering European market, not only for cannabis and and we're working on distribution for, um, for our product in the USA in 2018. So we're going to build the brand, we're going to have the reach with this cheap device, we're going to make money on the cartridges. You can think of it like the Nest, Nest Cafe, or what is it called? The Nespresso for cannabis. So we're not going to make money on the hardware, which you've just seen. We're going to make money on the filters. So the air filter that you don't have any bad odors in your living room. We're going to make money on the uh, nutritions, right? On the pot. I mean, 
the, the, the flowering pot. <laughs> Maybe on the pot later on. So and in 2019, we're going to use that brand and, and build this digital community where people can share their produce with others. And by that, we are competing not only with all these other clumsy looking row equipment stuff, we are then competing with the dispensaries, and that's a big deal. Then we're not talking about a $2 billion market opportunity for the home growing, then we're talking about a $20 billion market opportunity, okay? And then 2020, we're gonna use the data we've collected from all these plants, because it's a complex system, we, we're collecting information such as temperature, humidity, soil moisture, soil conductivity, which indicates like how much uh, how, how much uh, fertilizers in the soil. Also, there's a camera in the system. So we have all these data points, and we can use these data points not only for the cannabis industry, not only for big B2B grow-ups, but also potentially in different markets, such like the whole AG sector, basically. So with our app, what you can do is you can switch the spectrum of the light and influence the growth of the, of the plant by that. So let's say you want to have like cosmetic appealing cannabis, then you can choose like the right spectrum for that. And then your cannabis looks more green. Or let's say you want to have like, uh, you want to go on the, on the quality rather than the quantity. You can do all that. And we're going to use the crowd to learn about that. And these learnings are going to help us to expand in 2020 into further markets. <coughs> so we've as you can see, we all have different numbers on the cannabis market. Mine are a bit, a bit higher than yours. <laughs> um, so I've, I got figures going from uh, 6.7 billion in 2017 all the way up to 70, uh, 67 billion. But John's going to talk about that more in a, in a second. And uh, he's going to give us his opinion. And for the home growing market, which I'm at home, I can say that it has doubled in the past years, and it's going to double again because, kind of, uh, because Canada is legalizing, uh, uh, California is legalizing on the 1st of January. So that's a big, big market opportunity there. That's why we're working so hard right now to get the product into the U.S. market. And also, I think we in the Western world always have like some kind of responsibility, and the responsibility with seeding is one for one. So that means for each plant you are growing with seeding, we are going to plant a tree somewhere in the world where it needs trees. And in fact, the, li the livelihood of three billion people depend on trees. It's hard to imagine, but if you're, it's, it's really a long tail. If you go all the way down, it's, it even ends at just women empowerment and and, and jobs for women, really, if you take a look at that, and it's called desertification. That's a huge problem. So you, you have a, you're helping to, to solve big problems in the world at no extra cost for you. So you're go doing something good by doing something good for you. So if you are interested in investing, we are raising money to expand to the USA. We are raising $3 million. And if you're interested in that, please come to me. That was a short version of my, of my pitch deck. If you are an investor or just an entrepreneur who wants to invest in, uh, who wants to start a company in hardware, I got a, apparently a hardware background, also software and e-commerce, please come to me. Feel free to ask me your questions, challenge what I've said here, and give me your feedback. The next speaker is going to be John. And John has been a mentor of mine or a sparring partner, how he used to who used to say it, rather than mentor. And he is really experienced in the medical cannabis industry. He has been the uh, CEO of AppCan Germany. And um, he's built Sense Media. And maybe you just introduce yourself. You can do it way better. Yeah, no, no, Thank you. All right, thanks, guys. Uh, I Raza will make it quick. Um, I was founding two com uh, five companies actually last year with several partners together and we sold two of them actually already, all of them regarding cannabis and all of them regarding Germany. We do, like uh, Anton was showing, 
there are different, three different markets in cannabis, like who touched the plants, the hemp market and the auxiliary market. Our companies was involved in all of that. And um, one big thing I'm, I, well, that's the main reason why I'm actually here is, and I am happy to see that more and more people are interested in going into our business and more people are thinking of doing something in cannabis. Because what Antonio was already saying, we need a, a lot of people and we need a lot of good ideas in the market because it's so big we can't do everything on our own. And we do such a thing like do you do here in Berlin as well because we need more people and we need more good ideas in the market. This is so big. And also from investor sides, um, I know a lot of investors actually and a lot of them are looking onto this market right now. So there is a lot of interest on their side to go in this market. What they really want is good projects, good prepared. So what I want to say is if somebody has an idea, just go for it. Do your homework, keep on doing it, and then you will find uh, also investors for that because the market right now is very open to it. And actually what um, Joe was saying, cannabis is a fun business in many ways. Even the medical part in Germany, which is very strong regulated, we have a lot of um, good sides of it. And this is very interesting to see how many big companies right now going into this market. In, when I started three years ago, there was nearly no bank in Germany what, who wants to work with cannabis companies. There was nearly no big company in the industry who wants to work with us. But right now, every bank in Germany works with us. Every big company, if it's from pharma industry or whatever, ask us, oh, you do this in cannabis, you do this, this, maybe we should do something together. So actually, the times in Germany already changed and hopefully they will change here in France as well. So that was actually everything. So if people are searching for jobs, we are, uh, need people. <laughs> Thank you.